Hey you guys, so it is um Lex aka Sparkle reporting live from the Grammys, um the pre day before, you know. Um this is the Grammy Shade Fest, you know, part you know, portion. Um I'm your host and I'm here to give you all like, you know, the four one one on the Shade Fest, the prestigious Grammy Awards and um the Shade Fest that I see going on that I live for and I love the Grammys for it. So the 2023 annual Grammys, the 65th annual Grammys is going to be partaking tomorrow. And um, it's going to be tomorrow at 8 p.m. And we have one of the nominees, Ms. Lotto. She is currently in Dior, in Dior, vintage Dior. And um, she is where? In Los Angeles, California. You know, she's one of the nominees. She's nominated for Best melodic rap and she's also nominated for best new artist 2022 so um i think this is a very strong win um very very strong win i think that she's definitely going to get one of them and um you know i'm just so happy for her and i'm proud of her because lotto has been through a lot you know 2022 was a a, a very very ch um challenging year you know someone's trying to work and then you got somebody like a cancer trying to come at you trying to knock you down, you know, like, let's start from the beginning. Just to briefly give you guys, like, you know, the shade that basically took place that was so unjust and so unnecessary that made the Grammys shade back in a very reasonable, justified manner. You feel me? The shade fest the Grammys are going to throw tomorrow is very justified. Oh, they are in every right to do with the, to do whatever they're doing. Because it's genuine, because, you know, the nominees and everything that the positivity in the room is genuine. But also, it's an example for people who think that they're entitled or think that they're above even the law. You know, it's like people got to be put in place. People Sometimes you got to check people. And the Grammys has put a check mark on somebody's specific, somebody, somebody specific. A check mark has has been placed on this person's forehead, and and everybody can see it. You know the Grammys checked and marked. But anywho, earlier in twenty twenty two, we only in February twenty twenty three, twenty twenty two. Lotto basically all the not um the the Nicki Minaj, okay, the person that is in check right now that is in that the, the Grammys is throwing palm trees and and the breeze and everything else at. Dirt, palm trees, breeze, everything the Grammys could find her throwing it at the girl. Like, you know, and she deserves it. So, you know, earlier in the year, Nicki Minaj slandered the Grammys per usual. She lied on the Grammys. Um, She was bullying Lotto out of jealousy and envy. And this is what happened. Quick rundown. So, let me go on Lotto page real quick. I can't wait to see her red carpet outfit. I can't wait to see Miss Lotto, you know, show out, honey. This is your Grammy. This is your first Grammy nomination, baby. You better show out, honey. You nominated, sweetheart. You already won. When you get nominated, baby, you won. You 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 won already. So like at this point, if I was her, I would be putting a girl, I would have imported something from Cambodia to wear. I do not even know. All I know is that I'm I know Lotto's gonna look gorgeous. I know Lotto's gonna do very well. And she already won. She was nominated. I know that's right. So, um, okay. So, okay. So basically, what happened was the Grammys basically was coming up. the The Grammy nominations were coming up. Um, but submissions was going on. Okay. So basically, submissions happen when artists basically submit or the label submits on behalf of the artist their music and the Grammys go ahead and put them in the necessary categories they deem the artist should be in. Lotto was put for big energy, best melodic rap. Now a best melodic, a melodic record is basically a rap record with, with melody. Lotto is literally singing and rapping all at the same time. You know, she's definitely, she sampled Mariah Carey and um, she's pretty much, you know, um, she got a melody going on, Mariah Carey's melody and she's rapping over it. Melodic rap. So it per it fits perfectly for her category, right? Um, Nicki Minaj, then out of all, like, it was not even nominations. It's just the submissions 
basically they were revealing what category everyone submitted and was placed in and they're going to pick the nominations later. So nobody even made it to submission to nom- nominations yet. They're just putting people in categories and Nicki Minaj knocks on the Grammys door. It has a problem. I mean, she went directly to Harvey Mason's door. Like, hello. So they opening up the door like, who, what? Next thing they know, ah, oh, oh, hell breaks loose. Like, they basically are being slandered. They're being added by Nicki Minaj. The, the, the Her cult fans are acting retarded and mentally ill as they normally do. The Grammys is blindsided like, wait a minute, we haven't even pick people yet wait a minute we just put it we just put people in the category a potential nominee we didn't even nominate anybody niggas just literally we literally just said this one goes here this one goes here because we're music professionals we ain't even pick nobody we didn't even vote yet what so the argument was after lotto got um put in best melodic rap and she also got best um new artists she was put in that category Nicki Minaj went and added the Grammys and was like her record super freaky girl was moved from rap to pop so everyone's thinking and and she said Lotto if you move super freaky girl from rap to pop what is basically big energy why wouldn't you not move big energy from rap to pop Listen to the manipulation, y'all. I'm going to break it down. Everybody's... But the thing is, Onika Mirage, the manipulative person she is, did not tell all the info. Variety had to clear it up. So everyone's under the impression like... So basically, we were thinking Nikki and Lotta was in the same category. And that's how she painted it. And she painted it like the Grammys moved her and didn't move Lotto. They're in the same category and they moved her and not Lotto. So me, even then, I was like, well, if the Grammys feel what they, how they feel, how could you check these people about what they, about their establishment? Like, I'm confused. Like, you really want to act the Grammys and tell them people where to put you, like where to, who are you? Who the, who are you? You really want to act these people that's been around for 65 years and tell them the board where to put you so it's like a lack of respect you know what i'm saying she's been disrespect for her whole career her whole career no respect classless no respect for legends no respect for her peers her fellow peers none i don't know it's, she was trained by dogs who trained her i don't know but i know both her, both of her parents they failed her because she wasn't trained she obviously was not taught morals she was not taught things that ladies you know need to know you need to be seen not heard and if you want to be heard there's a respectful manner to go about it no education if you got an issue with the grammys why don't you just pick up the phone and call somebody and say well i need some clarification no she decides to be manipulative she wants to let me tell you what she did so now she drags a lot into the mess now, Lotto's like, wait a minute. Why am I being dragged into it? So everybody, all her little mentally ill fans, they're like, yeah, the Grammys, you know, she's speaking up. They always, you know, doing her wrong. Blase, blase. And, um, you know, Lotto, you know, they moved up, but not Lotto. So all this hoopla. This sparks up Nikki basically now attacking Lotto. Nikki wanted Lotto to defend her about the Grammys moving her and not lotto like she wanted lotto to defend her and sabotage her own nomination to defend her you see how stupid and how mentally ill she is that's why her fans are mentally ill they're all mentally ill she wanted lotto to go and to act the grammys and tell them move me too because Nicki minaj is upset so move me too, sabotage my nomination forget me move me too. She's mad that Lotto didn't speak out for her. So basically, you want Lotto to speak out for you and screw herself? What world do you live in? This is the this is what I'm talking about. This is this the the the, the lady's sick. What world do you live in for you to think that somebody's gonna knock themselves down to save you or to, you know, deteriorate or degrade themselves for you when you have nobody's back? You wanted her to 
hate herself and show lack of self-love for herself to show love to you? Who are you? Lotto rightfully so was like, why are you dragging me into this? I can't defend you if you shaded me. That's when Lotto was like, I can't defend you if you throwing shade at me all the time. Nicki Minaj has been throwing shade at Lotto and at every girl. Megan, you know, um, Cardi, you know, she hates Cardi. Cardi took her spot, so she can't stand Cardi. Cardi is like the, literally, she snatched up that spot. You know, Cardi's the girl. The Cardi's the America's sweetheart. We, they, everybody love Cardi. Her peers love her. The world loves her. It's over for Nicki Minaj. The people chose. You can't choose yourself. The barbs can't, the barbs are not powerful enough. They're not the world. They choose you, but the world, the rest of the eight, the the they, the rest of the billions, the eight billion, we choose Cardi. Y'all are overpowered. Y'all are irrelevant. That's why Cardi keeps winning because they're only a small little fan base compared to the world. You know what I'm saying? So anywho, she's been throwing shade at every rap girl that is threatening that that had that's threatening to her because Nicki Minaj, you know, she came into the game and she was alone for like ten years. She didn't have no competition. And anytime she got a little bit of competition like Iggy Azalea, she would do something to boot them out. So she basically would always tell her hating ass behavior when a rap girl would come up to boot them out insecure. If you are secure with your pen, if you are secure in your artistry, you could stand next to other girls how Little Kim did, how Missy Elliott did. They all were out together. Trina, Missy Elliott, Little Kim, Eve, they all were out together. They didn't have no, it wasn't, oh, I'm, I, I, I gotta be by myself. Nikki was, I gotta be by myself because she can't take competition. It don't, you cheated. You cheated. You didn't have all these girls lined up with you to really prove that you could stand out. You really had a good, you won every award because nobody else was out. What accomplishment is that? You didn't have nobody out with you for the whole career, your whole career. And when these girls started to come out, that started to shake her. It, it really bothered her because look at the, look at how the girls are winning awards and notice how it's like, okay, she used to win every award. Now it's like she'll win like some award and then the girls, they'll win like a bigger award. Like the girls are getting nominated. The girls are getting, you know, um, um, Grammy nominations. The girls are, you know, they're like competition for her. And they can say whatever they want to say. Album sales, yada, yada, yada. But if she was that girl that people, that her fans portray her to be, she wouldn't be pressed. A queen is never pressed. I have never known Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth to, to frown. My whole life seeing Queen Elizabeth, I've, I've always seen Queen Elizabeth with a resting bitch face. The queen was always unbothered. It don't matter what. During Princess Diana years, when I was a little girl, I have never seen the Queen Elizabeth flinch, look bothered, look upset, disheveled. Girl, resting bitch all day. Queen, don't give a fuck about Nathaniel. Like what? Who? Baby, she knows her role. She knows her position. Like, I, I watched her coronation. If y'all want to go on YouTube and watch Queen Elizabeth's coronation, and you'll see what a real queen act like, baby. She got coronated, girl. I felt I felt like God had <laughs> God had to send this sweetheart. Baby, it was so godly. Her coronation was, when they sworn her in as queen, it was so beautiful. It was a beautiful moment. But anywho, a queen, like, is unbothered. A queen does not address the civilians do you see queen elizabeth out there talking to the people she is she owns the people you see nick you see queen elizabeth fighting with other um with other um monarchs monarchies like the princess of the uh of of whoever ireland whatever whoever else got a, um, a monarchy you see queen elizabeth fighting with other queens and princesses and duchesses you know why because queen elizabeth knows who she is she runs the whole united she runs england the um what is it cuz they separated um the united kingdom i think it's they separated it it's a separation that happened y'all england and the united kingdom england is no part no longer part of the united kingdom is what i believe somebody told me england is separate something separated but no queen elizabeth the queen of england that was her role she ran that whole country and until her death, she was a resting bitch face. I have never ever in my life. You come a bit you comment down below and you tell me if you've ever seen Queen Elizabeth look different. She's always looked the same on her crown on her throne all the time. Same face. I have never seen her flinch. Ever. Blink. Barely seen her blink. Resting. Like, yeah, like re humbly at that. Because when you know who you are, you're humble. There's no need to pop or go off or act crazy and address people when you're the queen. Have you ever seen Queen Elizabeth act like a peasant? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's laughable. Girl, what? Anywho, 
So Nicki Minaj, basically, Lila says, you've been shading me all year and I've been letting it go. Then And then Nicki Minaj basically tried to basically flip it and say, you mad because I didn't give you a collab. Lotto said, no, you've been shading me all year. You've been saying stuff. What was it? She was like, you've been saying, I could pull it up, y'all. The tweets that um fired off between them. And I'm going I'm to get, I'm going to go look at it. Um, But I came on here basically because I see, uh, I was checking, you know, my girl who's nominated. I'm going to go pull up and we're going to do a little background because I need people to understand the point I'm going to make. You know what I'm saying? Like... It's it's really embarrassing because Missy Elliott literally just got honored like yesterday. Um, it was like the impact she um I forgot the name of it, but she got awarded something very big from the Recording Academy, and she had everybody that she worked with honoring her performing. These barbs say that Nicki Minaj is a queen, and she wasn't even there. She wasn't even there. How could you be a queen and Nick and, and Missy Elliott? You got, e you got um. All these different legends, Kim, all of these hip hop legends and everybody from back in the day we used to watch when we was kids, they in the hall. Everybody who is somebody is at the Grammys right now. It's Grammy weekend. That's a big night for musicians. And all the, all the, um, all the, um, what you call it? All the, um, legends and all the OGs and the new school was in the building. If you're supposed to be this queen of rap, why weren't you there? You're supposed to be, if you really run this rap thing like you say you do, why weren't you among them? You were not there. You don't have a seat at the table. You're a peasant. You are a peasant. And her barbs are very quiet. They're so embarrassed. It's embarrassing at this point. How the hell do you have all these legends in the building where you popping your mess about, oh, you the queen of this, that, and the, the queen of Amber Alert, for sure. Yes, you're the queen of Amber Alert, but queen of what? Because if, you if you're queen of anything, like how Missy's a queen, how Kim is a queen, they're in the building. Why aren't you there? What? Does it make it make sense? One plus one equals two, not four. You're not there, but you're supposed to pump, you pump, you, you pump yourself up to be the biggest. That's the thing. This is what happens. When you get ahead of yourself and you call yourself a queen. Nobody chose Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj chose herself. The people did not choose you. You chose yourself. The people chose Cardi. You're forcing yourself down people's throats and we rejected you. And that's why she's been ghost. Because the Grammys and everybody else said, no, we don't want you. The Barb's want you. They can have you. But the rest of this industry and the people, we reject you. We don't like you. We don't want you. We chose Cardi. It hit different when you're chosen, when you're the chosen one. She self-proclaimed herself as the queen. She chose herself. You That don't count. That's like me being in the classroom. You got all of us students and you got little Kim and you got Nicki Minaj or you got Cardi and Nicki Minaj. The whole class and the teacher sees that Cardi her work ethic, ooh, I, I drank Pepsi. Her humility, many different things. The votes came in. We all voted. We want Cardi to be, um, to be whatever. What what, what, what do we in class in real life class to get the certificate? A certificate of something. A certificate of excellency. Let's put it like that, right? So everybody vote. Or no, better yet, better even yet, homecoming queen. Prom queen, put it like that. Prom queen. We all got to vote for prom queen and homecoming queen. Okay? So you got Cardi, you got Nikki, right? We all are students and we're like basically in a schoolhouse. The whole schoolhouse got to put in a vote for prom queen. Okay? You can't choose yourself. The people got to choose you. We have to choose who we like or who we feel like, you know, who we relate to or who we want to take that position, who we like. You know what I'm saying? Who we really mess with, right? So we all vote for Cardi, but you walking around saying that you are the prom queen and prom and we put our vote we put we all put our votes in already. It's Cardi. Cardi's the winner. We chose her. So basically now, how stupid do you look when you're walking around saying you're the queen and the whole building 
on the a on the PA system. Take yourself back to high school on the PA system where they give announcements and when they call you to go to the main office because you're going home early. They announced. I remember this vividly when we were in school and they were announcing the winners for like prom queen, homecoming queen. They went on the PA system announcing everyone. Everyone's anxious. Like who finna say what the what what name finna come out. So you on the PA system. So the people were not the people on the PA system. They start saying names. Okay, homecoming queen, blase, blase. Prom queen, 2022. The winner is. Meanwhile, Nicki Minaj is like so confident. Like, I'm the best and I'm better than her. And Car- She's in the classroom and Cardi, Buckley's, Marlene, Zalmanaz, R. Cephas. Whoa. We're all clapping like, yup, that's what we chose. So now what you look like, doofus? You sitting there saying that you're the queen of what? We chose Cardi. She was basically the one announced on the PA system. So what, you going to fight us and tell us that, no, we're wrong? You're going to try to cancel out our vote and pick yourself? You're, you're ill. You're embarrassing yourself. And that's exactly what happened to Nikki. We all chose Cardi. The world chose Cardi, rejected her while she's running around saying she's something that she's not. You go to the coronation. I'm sorry. <laughs> you go to prom night. Who they crown? You're running around saying you're, you're the queen. And we go to prom night and they call out Cardi as the winner. It's time for her to be coronated as prom queen and the prom king too. We're clapping like, okay, she's going up and she's getting her crown. And you out there, Nicki Minaj, you, she's out here throwing a fit, running around, screaming, crying with her little mentally ill barbs. Oh my God. And we all looking at, and the whole, the whole freaking high school is looking at this bitch like, oh my God, this bitch needs, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. So now Nikki's embarrassed because the whole school we're at the we're at prom and we basically are clapping and we we we've 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 given Cardi the crown. That's who we want. And we've rejected Nikki. And so now Nikki's embarrassed. So now Nikki sneaks out of prom and goes home. This is basically what happened to her. Nikki has said what? What has Nikki has come out and do? Nikki is the loudest, most obnoxious person. Why isn't she on the internet? She's been gone for so for like months now. That's not like Nikki. Nikki's always ranting and raving and popping her shit. She got humbled. They're, she got rejected. The Grammys rejected her. They 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 they, they sunned her. Bad. You imagine you popping like I said. Imagine you popping. I'm the queen. I'm prom queen, and they announce a whole nother person, making you look stupid. And these are the people that matter. The Grammys matter. You want that award. She said she wanted that award. She said she lives for that award. She wanted that. We chose Cardi as prom queen. You wanted that award, but we chose somebody else. We didn't want you. You can't pick yourself. You can't force us to like you. And no, it's not sympathy. We just like her. We wanted her. When I put my vote in for Cardi, I like her. I like her. For whatever reason, everybody got their own reason. I like Cardi, 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 Cardi. Okay. We overpowered you, Barb's. Okay. It's Cardi. Now the Barb's are bitter, you know, over there eating their nails or whatever. Looking crazy. Got two Tweety bird, two, two Tweety Birds circulating their head. You know, like the loony people. They just got Tweety Birds just circulating. Look, look up that cartoon. That's for the crazy people. So now it's like um, Nicki Minaj has been ghost because she got rejected. The Grammys, the people that matter, your peers. Your pe- the people that you came in the industry looking up to, the legends, the people that are music professionals, all these artists, all they do is work hard because they are passionate about their art. And the Grammys is the, the, the award that every artist dreams of getting because it is not validation, but it's respect. Your art is accepted. What you are doing is being honored. It's a beautiful thing. You came in, you had a dream. You basically had art. You, you write, you basically, you know, worked hard and people are not awarding you for your, your creativity. It's beautiful to be accepted in the field that you chose, that you, that you love. You feel me? And so now everybody basically is at the Grammys. That's why Grammy weekend is so like, you know, it's a lot of buzz. Everybody, all the celebrities are Grammy are at Grammy weekend because the Grammys matter. No matter what a hater says or a bitter fan base says, the Grammys matter. They always will matter because if they didn't, they would have got canceled a long time ago. The Grammys is the Oscars for artists. 
Every artist wants that, including their fave. Their fave said that out, out her mouth. So they can't snatch the words out of her mouth. She said herself she wanted one. So now the Grammys rejects you. You got zero nominations. Basically, you, you running around ranting about you the queen, but the Grammys are saying, no, you're not. You, you suck. You got zero nominations. Boom. Embarrassment. Then the Grammys, the girl you put down, I'm going to go look up the tweets. Nikki called her a racist comment, Karen. Nikki basically... um said many many things and was putting her down when it came to um wanting a feature basically gassing herself up saying lotta was begging for a feature okay when lotta was basically respect lotta made it clear she looked up to her when she was coming up and because she was she lotto came up in her time period so nikki was in her era and that's who she looked up to how unfortunate it is that woman you look up to turns out to be a monster that traumatized her then you got a phone call Lotto released. You see, you hear Nicki Minaj degrading Lotto, asking her, how are you flourishing? Basically telling this woman, this young lady, that she's not doing nothing. And she's delusional to think that all the young new rap girls are flourishing. And she said that Lotto is crazy for saying that. Lotto has said, we basically have a platform. It was you all this time. We now have a platform. And Nicki Minaj was saying, what platform do you have? degrading her like she's a nobody lotto's like you think we're delusional for thinking that we're flourishing which they are because they all won grammys they all are you know winning and nikki was like you think you're flourishing nikki sounded like a a, a fucking animal she was so loud she sounded barbaric it was embarrassing you're so unladylike you're so distasteful it was so sad for me to hear that phone call because I'm like, wow, you are so hateful. This is the young girl. She's only at that time. Lotta was 23. She's 23 years old. You are a old bitch. And you literally are coming at this young girl that could be your daughter. If you had her in your teens or your, 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 your little sister. And you're saying that she's not flourishing and she has no platform like you're crapping on her. And the text messages that Lotto showed of how she was trying to, you know, respectfully get the collab from her because it's a business. Like, if you want to collab, if you want to feature, that's what you do. You reach out respectfully. Nikki shot down Lotto every time. In the text messages, everything Lotto did, shot her down. All Lotto was trying to do was work with her, her the person she looked up to. And Nikki was never planning on giving her that feature, but was asking her, is she, what is she releasing? What is she doing? Trying to get info on what Lotto's doing, but had no intention on collabing with her. She basically told Lotto, oh, I'm going to go pull it up because we're going to go back. We're going to roll it back. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to get to the point. But yeah, like I said, Cardi is basically the chosen one. And I and now Nikki finally understands that it's Grammy weekend. The legends are out. The new girls are out. The new school is honoring the old school, as it should be. Old school is giving the, passing the torch to the new school. Little Kim already chose who she passed the torch to. She said she passed her torch to Cardi. The queen, Little Kim, Queen B, she passed, it, she, she passed it to Cardi. Nobody chose you, Onika. The Grammys rejected you. Little Kim rejected you. Everybody rejects you. Your peers reject, reject you. Everybody. So, like... She's basically feeling that. So now she feels like she's outcasted and she feels like, okay, there's nothing to say. There's nothing that I could do. It's over for me. Like, I, I, I'm never going to win a Grammy. Nobody likes me. Um, nobody messes with me. And I can't, and she cannot redeem herself. You know, she already did too much damage. She's a very horrible, ugly person. She ruined herself. She self-destructed herself. So now it's like she's been gone for months. She's not popping her ish because she's been humble. That's what it is. When have you known Nicki Minaj to be quiet? She's a whole troll. She's an internet troll who stands up against walls in real life. She's a troll. She hasn't trolled or said anything over the internet because she's battling her husband's legal fees. And also, she basically has been rejected by the whole industry. And she's been popping her ish. And they basically are like, girl, stop popping. You are, you, you're not the chosen one. You know what I mean? But let's go pull up these text messages. Yeah, I know I had to go to Twitter, right? So I was basically going on and on or whatever. Just giving an example. Y'all know how I be. I like to just be, when I start thinking, my thought process goes somewhere else, but I don't want to jump around. All right, so look. So now, what I was going to say, the point I was making is Missy basically is Grammy weekend. All the legends are out. Missy got honored yesterday. 
And um, basically, everyone was making tribute to her. She been she was honored by the Recording Academy. Missy's a, has won countless Grammys, and she got a, an award. I gotta go get what the name of it is. Um, but you know, the Grammys this year is beautiful. It's looking great. Hip hop is, you know, the hip hop the fiftieth um uh, anniversary of hip hop being uh, you know a, a category in Grammy in the Grammys. You know, it's being celebrated. So all these different different hip hop artists, including Glorilla, is gonna be celebrating hip hop being a, a category in um the grant in the um at the grammys in the grammys in, um in the grammy nominations in the grammy categories in the grammy categories hip-hop that category right there has been around it's been inserted and it's been around for 50 uh, years so they're celebrating that and all of the hip-hop artists that we ever grew up with i saw nelly i saw ice t i saw a whole bunch of people old school new school you know are going to be performing and it's like wow that's a big lineup all in one performance like that's that's crazy that's gonna be a movie i can't wait but anywho it's I, the grammys this year it's gonna be groundbreaking i feel like the grammys this year it's like this feel different like these grammys like this particular grammys is very special it's very special and i feel like the reason why it's very special is because female rap has a spotlight has been put on these girls in every single way and it's like a lot of girls, they all prevailed no matter what they were going through, bullied, whatever, whatever. It's like female rap, although there was this divisive cancer, somehow came back together because the cancer was removed. So now you see everybody together and Cardi's, you know, presenting and Glorilla and Lotto, they're rap girls, new school rap girls, they're nominated. It's like it's coming together. Megan, Cardi, all the girls that came out, new girls. I remember when Megan came out, Cardi. Um, you got Lotto, the city girls came out. You got um all these different female rappers that came out, and half of them, the of the new school, they get nominated, you know, winning awards, presenting, you know, female rappers flooded. So you see all of these girls coming together. It feel like back in the day when Kim Missy Eve was out. That's how it was supposed to be. So I feel like the Grammys is very special because we're celebrating hip hop and how impactful our culture is on the world. You go to Tokyo, Tokyo is heavily, heavily, heavily their their fashion sense, everything. They're they're heavily influenced by our culture. Hip hop, black people, we are very we are very influential people. So we're we're being celebrated. You know what I'm saying? Our genre, our category, it's a beautiful thing because we really, really like hip hop runs the world. Like literally. Even though pop is mainstream, hip hop is really it even influ it goes, it trickles into mainstream. You feel me? So I feel like hip hop is being celebrated. The the legends are being, you know, honored. It's like everybody's coming together. There's there's so much positivity. It feels like it feels good. And I feel like Sunday, tomorrow, it's a beautiful moment that's gonna happen. And people are we're gonna be talking about this. Like it's gonna be crazy. I feel like the Grammys are gonna be amazing because of the positivity that I've been seeing. It started off great. Missy got nominated. I'm sorry, Missy got awarded. Everybody was honoring her and um like yeah and now tomorrow the girls you know the new school girls two of them are nominated and they have a big chance of winning and then Cardi's presenting you know literally being a woman's woman and I I think she's I mean what else could she be presenting it's it, it gotta be rap it's gonna be rap people are saying it's Beyonce I don't think that I think that Cardi's presenting rap because that shows female unity Cardi is a, a person that already got her Grammy now she, it, it's a beautiful moment Girl, I want to cry. It's a beautiful moment when you see Cardi, for example, present a rap, um, be the rap, you know, be the person that presents like, you know, an award to a lot of Oracle or Willa. Imagine, imagine that, like, imagine if Cardi, for example, is presenting, um, the, 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 uh, best melodic rap, right? Glorilla got, she got best rap performance for FNF. Cardi's going to be presenting either one. Okay, it could be either one. It probably could, will be Glorilla because she's really like that's her cousin. So it probably could be Glorilla or Lotto. Imagine Cardi presenting a Grammy to Glorilla. I'll be in tears. I'm already emotional. I want to cry. That would be a beautiful moment because Glorilla like comes from Memphis. She's a small, she's a, a country girl, you know, stereotyped in every single way. Came out in less than a year, killed the game, and she's at the Grammys in less than a year shot to the top and cardi a former grammy winner uh, a freaking modern legend is giving her her grammy do you know how emotional i would be if i was glorilla 
I would have been in shambles, crying, happiness. Lotto, if it, if she were to present for Lotto, it would be such a beautiful moment. Lotto coming up and getting her Grammy from Cardi. It's only right. It's going to be hip hop. It's no Beyonce. It's, Beyonce is a whole different category. It don't make sense. It's rap. Cardi's going to be giving a girl her Grammy. And they're showing you what female rap is supposed to be about. That's what makes the Grammys. That's what is going on here. That's why it feels so good. Because the Grammys, basically, they're showing people this is how it's supposed to be done. So whoever it is that wins, Lotto, Cardi, if she presents a Grammy to um, Lotto, now that's an emotional moment. Because it's like big sis, little sis, um, you know, experienced peer, you know, like new rookie, like a rookie, like what Nikki was supposed to be doing for these girls, Cardi's doing it. Now, see, that's what I'm talking about. What Nikki was supposed to be doing for Lotto and Glorilla, Cardi's doing it. And that's why we chose her because she's a woman's woman. She's a good, she has a good heart. We chose Cardi for a reason. We don't fuck with that cancer. What Nikki's, what Nikki was, she was supposed to do that. She was supposed to give Cardi her award. Instead, she decided to hate and be jealous of Cardi, be a cancer, create beef, with legends like him, come for Cardi. And now you are so embarrassing. You're going to let Cardi be the one to to give these girls, pass the tor torch, give these girls their Grammys when it was supposed to be you. You're supposed to be legendary. And you literally fumbled. You literally, you literally, like literally, literally fumbled what what the purpose was you know what i'm saying but let's get into tweets okay she calls see she says scratch off get your dumb ass to the mic right now explain this shit since you just became a rape activist in the last five minutes oh you better have a good explanation for this shit right the fuck now this better be a typo so somebody had wrote because you know lotto basically was being attacked and she basically attacked the fact that nikki's married to a rapist so she got mad or whatever and was like oh lotto's a rape activist you see how evil she is like she's making fun of rape because her husband's a rapist she's okay with rape because that's who she married so somebody lied and said your father is in his 60s your mother is 39 meaning when your father had you he was roughly in his 30s your mother was 16 or 17 you know you know what that means right that was a bold-faced lie both her parents were the same age when they um uh where they, they were they're they're the same age that was a bold-faced lie and then and then th you see how the barbs like literally make up like literally make up um shit lotto's mom and dad are the, they they both were 16 and literally they said that this man was 30 and she was a teenager all because they want to protect Nicki minaj nasty ass because she sleeps with a rapist her whole life and had a baby by that bitch so she deleted this afterwards because she she looks stupid she called lotto scratch off because you know her um her um theme is lotto big lotto so she wanted to basically demean her and call her scratch off right you were supposed to be the legend but this is how you treat the the new school girls right okay then Y'all keep letting these bozos weaponize the word rape when they're being dragged and not holding them accountable for not actually caring about rape victims in real life. They have the same two drags about me and one of them ain't even about me. That's how you know when you're that bitch. Like, she's a weirdo. Like, literally. She doesn't get that she looks crazy. Like, she literally don't care about rape victims in real life because she's in court right now for harassing one of them. Jennifer Huff. Like, literally. You're literally in court right now for your husband, you and your husband harassing one of them. She got the case again. It was against them both. She dropped it against Nikki and focused on Kenneth. That's your husband, though. You're a reflection of him. And you made phone calls to her, according to Jennifer, you know, trying to get her to recant her, her story, her true story. So, um, Nikki Minaj said, who want to hear the reference tracks of scratch off ghost writers rapping her bars? She used me and the barbs in every interview until that album sold double wood. Now she wiping that spray tan off and being a Karen. They black when whatever, whatever. This was evil. So I'll post to my goddamn self. They'll all tell you I write too. 
I heard a few of your refs before they came out too, boo. And she was right because the ref, we gonna get into that. You forgot we all collab with the same writers. Difference is, I don't deny it. The world seen me writing since 16 on national TV though. Boom. After Lotto said that, Nicki Minaj never popped back about the writing because Lotto exposed her. We all use the same writers. I don't deny it though. You lie. She writes too. She collaborates with writers. The difference is she's real about it and Nicki's not. And she has heard her references as well. And Nicki shut the fuck up. Um, so this is when she was basically um trying to ba- when 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 Lotto was like, you know, checking her like about why you why you coming at me and trying to drag me by my nomination? Like why are you dragging me in bull crap or whatever the case may be? Nikki tried to flip it and say that Lotto was mad about the collab or whatever that she didn't give her. So she was posting like, you know, messages of, you know, oh, notice the pattern. Oh, okay, you only get called old when you pass on their features. So you started with Lotto. You brought up you brought up her name. Lotto defends herself. Now you want to gaslight her and say that she's mad because you wouldn't give her a feature. So this is the messages of, you know, Lotto basically being professional, wanting to ask the person she looked up to when she was a little girl for um features. Um for you know the um for a feature, a collab, because she wanted to work with her. And so um And so, you know, uh, basically, she's gaslighting her at this point. You start the beef for her. You start, you bring up her name. Now she's defending herself. Now you're saying that it's about a feature when it's not. Then you're saying she, you want to release reference tracks um, of her, um, ghostwriters. Then you want to say, um, then you want to say, um, she's a scratch off because you're trying to basically make fun of the fact that she calls herself Lotto. You see that all the digs? how low she was going. Then you want to sit up there and lie about her parents' age and basically these mentally ill barbs conjuring up a whole lie about her parents. And the truth came out like, this is not, it It was just so much. It was like, it was a hot ass mess. It was a hot ass. She said, I literally named you as my dream collab multiple times in multiple interviews. Like I told you on, a, on, on the phone, I looked up to you. You still never answered my question about where the random shades started coming from. Cause then she said, look at Karen makes up a fake beef in a passive aggressive attempt to show her frustration. Look, she's gaslighting her. You brought up her name about the Grammys. Now you're saying she's, excuse me. You're saying she's making up a fake beef when you brought up her name. Do you see how ill she is? She brought up Lotto. Lotto's defending herself. Lotto's saying, you shaded me on so many occasions and you want me to defend you about your category being moved or whatever, your song being moved, but you shade me. Nikki said, oh, well, you're just mad because you're not defending me because I didn't give you a feature. Got like literally playing reverse psychology, gaslighting. Then she starts to call her all types of names. Karen being racist because Lotto's mixed. But Lotto's way more. But the thing about it is that Lotto's way more black and hood than you. She's an interracial girl, but she'll beat the fuck out of Nikki. And I know that for a fact. I don't even I already know. I already peeped Lotto's vibe. Like, I already peep her. You know Nicki Minaj stands against walls. She's pussy. All these rap girls could beat her up. Megan, lot, uh, she almost got killed by Cardi. Um, uh, 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 Lotto, who she called Karen, definitely could handle Nicki. Like, all these rap girls can monkey stomp Nicki. Nicki's pussy. She's soft. Only, she's an internet gangster. You know what I'm saying? More um, mess. She said... How could you basically, how could you sit up there and try to flex on this girl about a feature when she said you were her dream feature? It's like sad. Like you, you are so self-destructive. You don't like, you don't love yourself because somebody literally is respectful towards you and says you're her, her dream collab and you crush her dream by showing that you are a monster. The person that she looked up to all those years is not really who she portrayed to be on TV. She had to become an artist to see who you really are. So... She said, this lady so meticulous with her shade so she can twist it later and act like it wasn't about you. Stand on that shit. Exactly. Throwing rocks and hiding her hands. That's what Nikki does. Let's not forget how she snubbed you on Queen Radio as well. Subbed you on Queen Radio as well. She was mad. You said everything was thriving and said, don't categorize yourself with her. That's what happened when Lotto was basically saying to Jason Lee that, you know, Nikki was the only one for a while. Now it's more rap girls. Everyone is thriving. She didn't say nothing wrong. She's telling the truth. Nikki took it as 
she basically tried to say, don't categorize me, don't compare me. Really what Nikki was saying was she didn't want to hear that, oh, they're thriving. She didn't want to hear nobody doing good. She basically got mad because Lotto said they're thriving and she tried to twist it and say she's trying to basically, you know, compare herself to Nikki when really Nikki was just mad that Lotto told the truth. It's not just you anymore. Like, it's not just you. It's definitely like, you know, us now and we're thriving she got mad at that and that's how that whole lotto situation began and she started shading her and shading her and shading her then have the nerve to talk about oh when the grammys came out with their sub submission lists the category lists oh you should defend me about melodic rap about about the rap category or whatever lotto's like you shade me all day long why would i do that that's how that that's how that's how that situation happened nikki gets mad the gaslighting her starts talking about oh you just mad because i wouldn't give you a feature lotto's lotto was like okay you're my dream you're you're my dream collab like i told you that already it's not about a feature i'm just saying you always shade me and nikki would refuse to answer that question she like you didn't answer my question though no. nikki like why you always shade me and Nikki would ignore it and proceeded to insult her, call her scratch off. You know, Lotto released a phone call where she's degrading her, saying that, you know, she's delusional for saying that her and the girls are flourishing. She has no platform. Um, She's basically whack. That's what she was telling Lotto as an old ass bitch, telling this 23 year old girl that she basically was nothing. Um, Curving her text messages. Lotto's coming respectfully and offered big energy to her and said, you know, big energy. Nikki had said that, you know, I want to be on a record where it organically does well. Like I want it to blow up on its own and then I jump on it. The record does better. So she wanted to be on a big record, basically. Lotto brought big energy because the first records that Lotto brought, she rejected. Respectfully, she respected her and brought big energy and was like, well, this one is doing very well on the radio. What do you think? And then Nikki ignored that as well. Big energy blew up really, really good because it's like, okay, she snubbed her. But then it's like Mariah got on it and like like Mariah performed with her. She got Mariah. You know what I'm saying? She went bigger than her. Like she shitted on Nikki. Like, OK, you didn't want to be on big energy. That's fine. When Lotto performed, it was a Mariah sample already, but she wanted Nikki on it. But when Lotto performed big energy, Mariah Carey came out and was the co-signer like that's her that's her song. Like that's basically her melody. And Mariah herself came out as the queen. I mean, you know me, Mariah don't move. Mariah stand in one position. <laughs> they rolled my sis out. They rolled the queen out of me. Mariah sat there and hit her high notes, sweetheart, and was living, honey. And that was a beautiful moment because it's like Nikki was so shady and literally dismissed Lotto and made was like treating Lotto like a peasant. And you got Mariah Carey, who who Nicki Minaj is a peasant too, because who the fuck is Nicki Minaj to um to Mariah? Mariah is you're a peasant to her. She got the big dog you know, on stage with her. So you don't matter. Big energy went big, went crazy. Every minute I would be on in my car riding, I would hear Lotto, big energy. It, 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 the radio station, every freaking minute, you front, you go from 96 to 99.5 to 103.5, Lotto, Lotto. Lotto. And it was a big, that's what, you know, Nikki was saying she wanted, but she didn't want to work with Lotto. She was just trying to press Lotto for info on her um projects and was rejecting Lotto like she was a peasant. Lotto bossed up, got Mariah on stage with her, and the record blew up, and then got nominated for a Grammy, and Nikki went silent for three days straight, because the same girl you shitted on, the Grammy shitted on you, and gave you zero nominations, and gave Lotto two that she earned, so like, God don't like ugly, you know what I'm saying, you put this girl down, this girl, like, you, you, you beat her down, and the Grammys lifted her up, the award that you want that matters so much, they gave, they, they lifted her up, you put her to the ground, the Grammys lifted her up and embarrassed the fuck out of you. And that's what happened. So this is the conversation with Big Energy or whatever the case may be. Um, so this is pretty much what it was. So now when you go back to um, Instagram, right? So it's like that. When you go back, you know, to the beef or whatever they had, it was the categories, submissions, not even nominations. She wanted Lotto to go to bat for her about being in the rap category and not being moved and her being moved. What is it that she said um, was the issue? She said, I don't have a problem with um, being moved. I just feel like if I'm going to be moved, then. Um... Oh, 
Okay, this is one of the um This is one of the things that she shaded uh, Lotto with. She called Lotto looking older than her age. She said the rap legend admires LaRae's unique style that she's sexy while being completely covered. Girl, what? You sexy while being... She's sexy about while being completely covered. Uh, Coyle Ray walks around naked like a, to a naked toothpick. What are you talking about? And then you you show your whole body, your ass, everything. She's delusional. Then she said, and and has a face that doesn't look 20 years older than her real age. She, she called Lotto old and said you know she looks 35 in the face already she was shading lotto may 22nd 2022 this was i'm sorry march 22nd 2022 in march she basically was shading lotto already and that's what the sh that's the shade that lotto was talking about why are you so mad at me like what are you how is Coyle ray having confidence or lack of confidence what does that got to do with me she's basically shading her then Lotto, Lotto was like, Ben Stubbin, super freaky grandma, is married and related to fucking rapists. You ain't gonna bully me, bitch. My idol turned rival, now you hating. Boom. That's what hit. That's where super freaky grandma came from. Lotto broke the internet. Now, Nikki is forever known as super freaky grandma. And then she cleared it when she said, you related, you ma you married and related to effing rapists. You ain't gonna bully me, bitch. My idol turned ri rival. She said, you're my idol turned rival. Lotto cleared her. It was over with. After that, it was over with. Super freaky grandma took off. Fat and 40 took off. Everything. Lotto started that. Is giving coke lotto hashtag that that but that went viral <laughs> lotto went viral lotto went viral honey lotto cleared okay she said you're not gonna bully me so now guys fast forward rap okay this is where where the grammys you know where i'm leading to so we got all the back history right so now we go back to Nikki being mad about the melodic the the rap rec the the rap category she says that you know uh Super freaky girl, got, super freaky girl got moved to pop, and but I, and I don't have no, I don't have no problem with that. But move Lotto too, because what do you call big energy? She was saying that's basically that's pop, when it's not, it's melodic rap. Lotto is rapping on a melodic record. That's why it's called melodic rap. Just because she's on a melodic Mariah record does not mean it's a pop record. That's not a pop record. It has pop appeal, but it's it's not a pop record. She's rapping, and it's an urban song that made it mainstream. Nikki was just mad that Lotto was basically nominated and wanted to sabotage Lotto. So what she didn't say, though, she made it seem like they were in the same category. And so they moved her and didn't move Lotto like they was in the same category, only to find out Variety wrote and said, um, Nikki has several other records in the rap category. She got this record, that record, that record in rap. Um, Melodic, uh, her and Lotto are not even in the same category. And she got all these different nominations in different categories. She got more than one nomination in the rap category. That record is the only one in pop. She got other rap records that are in, you know, Do We Have a Problem, I believe was one of them that was in the rap category. And her and Lotto are not even in, in the same category. So I'm like, okay, so you basically going off on Lotto or the Grammys about the fact that they moved you and you feel like they should move Lotto. Y'all not even in the same category. Why are you worried about Lotto? She's in melodic rap. You are in rap, just regular rap. The 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 the, the record the um category Glorilla is in. You're in regular rap. You got nominations for regular rap. She failed to say that because she was trying to sabotage Lotto. She was mad that Lotto really got nominated for anything. Hates competition. So y'all not even in the same category. And you're telling the Grammys to take Lotto's um, nomination or take, I'm sorry, take Lotto's song that's in a whole different category from you, which is none of your business and put it in, a, in the pop category. That's another level of hate. We were thinking the whole time that they were in the same category and she feels like, you know, unjust, unjust, injustice was, you know, happening because, okay, we in the same category. Y'all moved super freaky girl, but y'all didn't move big energy. So now it's like, okay, girl, like what, what? Even then it's like, girl, what you mad for? These are music professionals. Like they know what they're doing. Like, how could you tell them what to do? So only to find out you got nominated. You got, I'm sorry, you got put in different selections and different categories, numerous in many categories. Literally many categories. You got more than one record on rap. You got pop um, um, submissions on in that category. You got all these different records that the, the Grammys put you in different categories. And you got about three of them in rap. 
And melodic, one record that 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 melod that Lotto have in melodic, you worried about what Lotto doing, and she's not interfering with what you're doing, but you're trying to sabotage her and trying to get the Grammys to move her and making it feel make making it manipulating people to believe that that y'all in the same category and the Grammys did you wrong when the Grammys really the Grammys did not even put you in the same category as Lotto. They moved you, but Lotto was not even in that category. She was in a whole different category. So basically, you were hating ass bitch. You wanted them to move her because you didn't want to see an, another rap girl win. You wanted her to be pop so she wouldn't win anything rap. That's what it is. So she tried to sabotage Lotto. It was very evident. They they exposed her, Variety Magazine. So now everybody's like, what? Like, you literally did all that? When these people literally put you in all these different freaking categories, ho, like you literally got three categories, you got three songs that submitted and put in rap category, you got one in pop, you got one over here, one over there, and you worried about what, who, Lotto, and y'all not even the same category, and y'all, you telling the Grammys to remove Lotto from a whole different category you're not even in? You want us, you want her to sabotage her own nomination for you? What type of sick mind do you have? But, you know, then again, she did marry a rapist. So she does have a sick mind. But I really felt like that at that moment. I was like, okay, she's definitely, I said, what a waste. What a waste of a person. It's that's it. When, when Variety put that out, when Variety put that out, I was like, okay, she's, she's sick. Because I really was under the impression that her and Lotto was in the same category and they moved her and she was mad about that and Lotto le was, was left. L meanwhile, Lotto in a whole nother category and Nikki is in her own category. So she's worried about Lotto's category, manipulating people to think that Grammys did her wrong, slandering the Grammys, making the Grammys look bad. Well, yet again, because she always talks crap about the Grammys. She talks about these people like dogs and expects them to award her with one, which is delusional. It's like, it's like, what? Like, what? What is wrong with you, love? Like, what is wrong with you, girl? So right there, that's what was going on. So then Grammy nomination night, um, um Grammy nominations are basically said that it's going to be announced this day, whatever. Nominations, we all wake up. Twitter is in shambles. First thing I see on my YouTube, N N Nikki got zero nominations. Lotto got two. Glorilla got one. Bit I, what? I said, hold on, wait. I did a whole video on it, and I was like, <laughs> you did all of that over nom. You did all of that over submissions and categories, and they didn't even nominate. And you were popping off and lying on them about, you know, categories that they that they put you in for submissions and. Only for them to pick their nominees and you wasn't even nominated for not one. So you did all of that for what? The Grammys embarrassed her. She went into hiding, right? Next thing you know, Lotto, you saw, the, you saw the tweets where she was like, who wants to know, who wants to hear Lotto's reference tracks? Who wants to hear her, her ghostwriters or whatever the case may be? She said that. Like three days later, all of these records from Lotto, her references leaked. Lotto already said that she writes and she works with writers. Why did, what, what, what's the point? Nikki did that. She said it. Who wants to hear her references and the ghost writers that she has? Nikki asked that question. And three days later, all of Lotto's le references leaked. She really was trying to sabotage this girl because the Grammys, you know, stunned her. She said, okay, I can't control the Grammys. So let me control the people's opinion of her. If they see the references, they'll discredit her and say, you're not a real rapper. You don't write. So that when you win your Grammy, because she knows Lotto's going to win. When you win your Grammy, they're going to say you don't deserve it. That's what she was trying to do when she leaked those references. But God, <laughs> what she didn't know is you try to sabotage this girl and you lose. she lost again. When those references leaked, not she was trying to expose Lotto. Not only, but, but Lotto was not exposed because Lotto already was honest. And said, like Cardi said, we write. Our own stuff, and we also write. With, we also collaborate with other writers. That's how music is made. From the beginning of time, Michael Jackson Thriller that was not written by him. Somebody wrote that for him. The references you use, the references you write your own stuff. You take what you want. You leave what you want. You make your own version of the song, and you you write your writing, and you're working with these other writers, these talented writers. You're collaborating. That's what teamwork is. They write their own records, and sometimes they get references, and they go ahead and write to those references, and um, they collaborate with the writer. They keep what they want, leave what they want, create their own ideas and stuff like that. That's what a reference is. That's 
that's how music works. She always used her pen to try to put herself above Cardi. Cardi and Lotto already said they work with writers and they write. What are you exposing? What exactly? Are, she's so stupid. She exposed her damn self. Not only did she, she didn't expose Lotto. What she did was she exposed Bia. Bia was used to shade about her pen. It's a whole lot of money. And that was a reference. That's not the whole freaking song. Be a word for word. She didn't take not one bar out. She didn't write nothing. She didn't take not one bar out. She took, she basically did, literally brags about, bragging about her pen, trying to shade Cardi reference for a whole lot of money come out. She didn't even take not one bar out and put her own bar in. She didn't write Nathaniel. She just let it ride. And she literally read from the lyric sheet that um, Nikki claims Cardi does. She literally read from that. She literally word for word said what the writer put she didn't try to put her own spin to it she didn't write not a bar not a, not a word blick blick Quilla Ray got exposed but what Nikki didn't know is she got exposed too because she used the original writer's lyrics and flow now see now everybody is digging up now see that opened up the gate for people to say how long we already know about Lotto they write and they they work with people but you you say that you write 100% of your songs why is it on blick blick you're basically quoting what the original writer, the reference is the person that originally wrote it, Jason Lay. I believe his name is. He sends it to Koi. You know it's a reference. You and Koi, y'all basically take his lyrics and his flow and y'all add your own lyrics and y'all made the blick blick, right? If you listen to blick, the original lyrics and you listen to Koi's version, you see how Koi put in her bars and kept some. And Nikki did the same thing. She was used, she used his reference. So wait a minute. You say you are, you, you want Funk Master Flex and say that you don't use no reference. You write 100% songs. You write hooks. You write verses. You don't write no, you don't use no references and you use the blick blick reference. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ollie Diamond's different color, color, color. That's what he wrote. That's his flow. You took that from him. Koi took it from him. You did too. You knew that was a reference. So now she's exposed. She didn't know that was going to happen. You're trying to sabotage people, but you sabotaged yourself. Because we already know about Lotto. She's honest about her creativity. We know she right. And she also teamworks. You lied. You got exposed. Blick, blick, you took that flow. You took bars from that man, the original reference person. So now... People are now people like me and other people are investigating. Now you got all these YouTubers like, how long? Nikki stole this flow. She stole that. Now you got Brinks. People all up in my comments now telling me Brinks billion. Um, look at Safari. He's getting royalties. Um, this other the 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 rich sex record. She took that. The yikes record. She took that from this rapper. I'm listening to all these different people and I'm like, oh my god. This girl literally opened up the door for people to look at her career and see she was a liar, a lie the whole time. This amazing pen, this amazing lyricist that she claims to be. She took people's lyrics and flipped them around. Brings billion, rich sex. She took that man's whole verse and hook. She didn't change the hook. It's his hook. Flip the, flip the first verse around. Okay. And used his, stole his lyrics and his hook and put it on rich sex. And he sued her for copyright infringement, for copying his stuff, for stealing his stuff. And basically that was um, a lawsuit for her. Brings billion. Then people are sending receipts. Now Twitter's going crazy. People are digging. Okay, we see that you used references too. You lied. Let's go investigate. Now Brinks Billion comes out. Now people are like, oh my God. Somebody, Chad Turner, brought up a receipt of Safari receiving royalties for Pink Friday for his writing. And Safari is on the writing credits and she says Safari did not write anything for her and Safari is in the credits and is getting money off of the records that he helped her write. Then you got Yikes. She did Yikes. She stole that from an underground rapper. I forgot his name. I did the video on it. She flipped his lyrics around again and basically put it on her record. Yikes. Like literally verbatim. What he's saying, flipped his words put it on her record. Yikes. It's her, it's her lyrics. She stole from him underground. A lot of big artists like to steal from smaller artists because they feel they can, because they don't have the power to fight. Then the world cup song, they sent me the record. They sent me the people who originally the, or it's an Arabian group and her world cup song. She took that from an Arabian group 
and it's their flow it's their beat it's their lyrics she took she took their that from them took the flow of the girl singing it's an arabian group a small group that's not even you know u.s they're international so of course what are they gonna do she took the world cup, cup song from them to katanka something like that so we looking at all these receipts and we're like oh my god holla 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 on so girl you like allegedly leaked these lyrics you said it on your thing or whatever that you you know who wants to hear it and then three days later they're released only for lotto to be to come out looking okay and you're the one that looks like the dummy and the liar you see how god work now she looks stupid again her efforts to sabotage lotto failed again lotto nothing happened if anything what happened was there was a song the nasty song people was liking that they were like oh i want you to put this out bitch people want people to people want people people want a lot of to put put the references out bitch people were like i like cardi was like i like the song the nasty song and people were really asking her for that song so you thinking that the people finna clown her and the people are like i like this i want this out they asking for that song nasty song so then she put it out for them and then glorilla and her collaborated on, on fuck the club up and i love that record they slid so she tried to sabotage this girl only for her to look only for her to be revealed to be a liar only for people to to finally see the stealing only for people to dig i didn't even know about the brinks billion lawsuit i went digging i saw oh you got a sarah chapman lawsuit you paid her off copyright infringement again you brag about your pen but you got a whole copyright you got copyright infringement cases on your pen you got Safari getting royalties from his writing work. You got other, you got people in your, you got people in your writing credits, Safari's in there. And even at her, the Vanguard, she said, thank you to my writers. So what you was putting Cardi down for? What were you putting Cardi down for? And what were you trying to down Lotto for? When you said yourself, you got writers. I think she's sick. Like you said, you said yourself in Vanguard, you got writers. Then you want to flip and say to Funk Master Flex a long time ago, that you write everything, you don't have no writers. You're tr you're contradicting yourself. You're a liar. These refer these references leak. Nobody cares. Lotto's truthful. Don't nobody care about that. Okay, what and this is how music is made. What about it? You're the liar. You're the one that wasn't honest. You weren't honest like Cardi and Lotto. Don't nobody care about what they got going on because they're honest. We know their process. You're the one that said you write one hundred percent songs. So now you're on. You're in the spotlight. Your pen is in the spotlight. Now, people, everybody now is looking up and digging up, defending a lot of like, girl, what? Boom, Brinks Billion. Boom, Tracy Chapman. Boom. I'm like, oh, my God, stop. Just stop, girl. You're killing yourself. You tried uh, too many times. After that, and Lotto survived that sabotage, it's like she just went away. Lotto survived everything. Everything she, that was darted her way, she survived it. And now she's headed to the Grammys tomorrow about to win one because i'm pretty sure she's gonna win so i say that to say this Nicki minaj is a very very sad sad story of when people don't go to therapy for their childhood trauma she's a sad story a sad case it's 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 it's, it's sad um very confused individual identity crisis insecure doesn't know who she is damaged she's sad she did all of that Yelling out, I'm the queen, and I write, and Cardi doesn't write, and then everybody pulling up receipts on you, <laughs> on you stealing lyrics and you getting sued for it. People pulling up lyrics and references of you, blick, blick, the same shit you tried to expose, you expose your damn self. We see, hold on, we're not stupid. We hear the nigga, we hear his flow. That's the original writer's flow. You and Corey took it. Yeah, you knew that was a reference. You took the reference. You added some, you took some from him. And you, you took some out and you added your own and you took some from him, like his flow and certain lyrics. So you doing the same thing all the girls are doing, like Lotto said. And Lotto basically, you you know, the, the, the leaks just proved Lotto right. And everybody basically saw Nikki for the fraud that she is. People are digging out and seeing you still in World Cup songs. You got all these different underground artists that people are digging now. Things that people been knew that nobody was saying anything about. People are finally having a platform to say it like, yo, I've been knowing this for a long time, but nobody cares about it. But now we do because all these references leak. You want to talk about references and ghostwriters. And you know what's crazy? A ghostwriter is somebody that is not credited. Blick Blick, the only credits on Blick Blick 
is Coyle Ray and Nikki. Now, Blick Blick was not written by them. Blick Blick was written by Jason Lay. That's the original writer. Jason Lay was not listed as a writer. You got a ghostwriter. You got a ghostwriter. Y'all got ghostwriters. You literally, that's what a ghostwriter is. They don't get credited. They get paid, but they don't get credited. Like they get paid on the back end, but they don't get, they don't get credited. So they paying and Corla Ray lied about, you know, writing it too. And she got exposed. So they're basically bragging about their, Nikki's bragging about her pen. Like she wrote Blick Blick on her own and say, look at the writing credits only for the references to come out. Like we stupid and we see Blick Blick is a reference. A reference is sent by a writer. You got a writer and you used his lyrics and his flow. You and Koi, yeah, yeah, both did. He's not listed on the writing credits. It's his song given to y'all. You had he was your ghostwriter. He's both of y'all ghostwriters. You see how you see how dumb she is? You see how stupid, like how retarded she is? Like you literally did everything to sabotage Lotto and you literally failed every time. Now she's going to the Grammys. Yesterday, they honored Missy Elliott with an award, the Recording Academy. You got all the goats out there, the legends out there honoring her. You got Cardi about to present. We don't know what she's about to present for. The Grammys is keeping that very sealed. We don't know what anybody's going to be presenting, but Cardi, she's a presenter. I, I'm thinking rap because she's a hip hop artist. You got the hip hop 50th, um, uh, honor, um, uh, that um they're honoring um hip hop being a category at, in the Grammys uh for fifty years they got that going on hip hop is being honored you know what I'm saying our culture is being honored you got these young beautiful women Lotto and Glorilla nominated who really represent the underdogs that really came up and shine and broke barriers and definitely like proved their you know I am not my environment Glow comes from her environment she she made it. And show people like, hey, I'm not just this nothing ass, nobody, ghetto ass, ratchet ass girl. I'm talented. Lotto was grinding for a long time and proved, yo, I came from TV, but I really know how to write. I know how to rap. I'm here now. I've earned this. They're going. They're going to be all dressed up on red carpet. I can't wait to see them. So now it's like, and then it's like, all this stuff is happening. You claim you're the queen of rap. You talk about your pen. For this whole year, last year, what got exposed? You. You basically got exposed for being fraudulent. Your pen is, it, you, you steal people's ink. You don't write. You definitely use references too. And you have ghost writers. Um, to the point where you got sued. You pretty much um, are a bully. You prove that you are degrading. You are ta you are classless and tasteless. You put Lotto down in so many different ways, even down to racism, calling her Karen. You um, literally said you basically were gonna you know you wanted you had you you insinuated that you had information on her by references and ghostwriters. You then the leak happened, and we all know where it came from. But I mean, put bitches is pussy. They're not gonna say I did it. So you expose your damn self, like I said. Then you claim to be this queen and the Grammy stunned you and said, no, you get, you got zero nominations. And they, they, they honored Missy Elliott just yesterday and all the legends are out. You're supposed to be queen of rap, but you're not in a building. You're not even invited. You're not in the building. Nobody messes with you. How could you be a queen of something, but you're not next to the legends? If you a legend, you should be next to Kim and Missy Elliott, right? You should be seated right next to them. You've been out for like 20 years, right? Why aren't you there? Embarrassing. That's my point. And you supposed to be the legend that came, you know, the new school legend. You were supposed to embrace Cardi and give Cardi her Grammy. How Cardi's giving Lotto. You were supposed to be giving Lotto her Grammy. You were supposed to be giving Megan her Grammy. You were supposed to be giving Glorilla her Grammy because you are the new girl. You were the new, you're the girl that came right before them. So you should have basically sat in your legendary lane, like how you claim, and let these girls shine, like Missy and Kim and even all of them, which is why they're honored to this day and respected, well respected. And you should have been the one to give they, 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 these awards to these girls. But you literally was a bully and you were insecure and you're hateful. And now you're excluded. You're a queen of what? If you can't be in the building at the Grammys, what are you? You're a peasant. You're not in the building. How are you the queen and you're not in the building? Everybody's there but you. Where is the queen? She took a leave of absence? No, she's paying legal fees and the Grammys basically said, bitch, you're not a legend. You're not invited. We don't want you. We don't care about you. 
That's what they said. And Cardi is doing everything that you're not doing. Cardi embraced the girls. That's why I guarantee you Cardi's going to be presenting rap. And she's going to be giving the Grammy to a rap artist. And she's going to show people what Nicki should have been doing. It's going to be a very legendary moment for Cardi. And Cardi's going to be praised again for being the girl's girl. Because I guarantee you, if Cardi, for example, is the one that presents Lotto or Gorilla with their Grammy, bitch, the, the whole internet going to break. They finna drag the fuck out of Nicki. I'm telling you, I'm predicting it. They're going to drag Nicki Minaj. She's going to be embarrassed. Cardi's going to be praised, per usual. And it's going to be a lesson that, to her, you are not more powerful. You are not God. You know what I'm saying? And the Grammys wasn't playing with her. They disrespected the fuck out of her as they should. Because she disrespected them as superior authority. They're superior to you. They make the, they give the Grammy. How are you going to disrespect authority? You're disrespectful. So they sunned you and disrespected you in the worst way. They said zero. Not even one. You get zero. Ooh. That hurt her soul. She was upset. She didn't know what the fuck to do. Next thing you know, the leaks happen. Ooh. That's going to make them really hate her. Lotto. No. Everybody love Nasty Song. We all vibe. We still rocking with Lotto. That didn't do shit. That exposed you, dummy. Now you under question. You under the spotlight for your your your, your pen. And you fucked around and you exposed Bia. You exposed Coyla Ray. Everybody that you were trying to expose Lotto and you exposed everybody but Lotto. So like, I, I'm so happy and proud of Lotto because she had a very rough, rough year. 2022. But... She prevailed. She did not let her idol turn rival tear her down out of jealousy. All the rac the racist comments, all the leaks, and all the things to sabotage her. She's still going to the Grammys tomorrow, and she's going to leave with a Grammy. I guarantee you that. And Glorilla's going to leave with a Grammy, too. I mean, I'm 99% sure. Lotto's going to definitely get one. I know for a fact Lotto's going to get one. Everything that she's been through, oh, the Grammys saw all of that. She's getting one. That's already that's already established. Glorilla, I'm 99% sure she's going to get one. 99% sure. I want her to win that because I don't see nobody else in her category that made noise like her. You know, FNF made the most noise. I, I think she got it. But for sure, Lotto definitely got a Grammy. And we all know it. We all know it. And, and Lotto even know it. She know it. We know it. And so it goes to show you like... It's sad. It's so sad. You literally, you know, you, you you played yourself. Being a hater, you never win. Currently, what's going on with Nicki Minaj right now that nobody's talking about because, you know, look, the all the legends, they're in the building. Every This, this is Grammy weekend. This is the Grammys. Jay-Z, Kim, Swiss Beats. H to the it's up, B to the it's that. That's what the barbs don't know that. They don't know that. They little whack ass. They little young stupid asses. They don't even know not one Jay Z. They don't know H to the we we know that. Okay, goats everywhere. Exactly, goats, <laughs> goats everywhere. Look at the material, folks. Look at the material, folks. Like consensus. Like hold on. <laughs> Beyonce has entered the chat. The Rock Nation brunch. Okay. <laughs> what? Um, hold on. Lil Uzi rocks a little slick back to the annual pre Grammy Rock Nation. What the hell? What? Lil Uzi out here looking like Easy E child. But Lil Uzi, I'm handsome to me. But I mean, where's JT? She's a peasant. He probably didn't take her. Um, yes, here we go. Lil Wayne shows love to the legendary Lil Kim and Missy Elliott during the Recording Academy Honors. He was famously recognized. He has famously recognized Missy as his all-time favorite rapper many times. So, yes, she was basically, she got the Lil Wayne shows love to the legendary Lil' Kim and Missy Elliott during the Recording Academy Honors. Yes, it was the Recording Academy Honors, and uh, Missy got it. This is supposed to be um, Nikki friend, but it's like, at the end of the day, cash money used Nikki as a little puppet. That, that was their money. 
Nikki's done now. She's not somebody that they can benefit off of. She's a liability. So it's like, you think that they're going to stay by your side? There's no loyalty in the industry. If anything, they're going to be loyal to who they really, really grew up on and like. That's why no matter who Wayne was rocking with, you, they was only rocking with you because you were hot at the moment. You're not now. You're done. They know that. What they do to, to the people who they genuinely respect and are you know that they grew up on that's what they 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 boxed in with little kim and missy the inspirations you know what i'm saying so it's like nikki gotta feel real real bad because what is wayne doing with kim and missy kim is like her op that she created and kim don't give a fuck about her but she created herself an enemy as kim of, of kim wayne is over there with them wayne is a goat wayne is legendary little wayne is our little baby for the kids today little wayne was our little baby Little Wayne was our little baby when we were growing up. Little Wayne was he was that was him for us. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Why you not done, Nikki? Where are you? Where are thou? Goats everywhere. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's so freaking special. Like it's like you feel like chills, like everybody that you grew up on, everybody who impacted music. Oh my God, the room is filled with beautiful people. Like, oh my God, I grew up listening to her, 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 her. Okay. Um, Chloe did a tribute. Missy won the, the Black Music Collective, the Global Impact Awards. That's what it was. The Global Impact Award. The Recording Academy Global Impact Award. How Missy Elliott globally impacted the world, and she and she did. Goats. Everybody wanted to be a Sierra. Like when I was in middle school, Sierra was basically up for us. Like we were, and I, when I was in middle school, Sierra was that girl. We all wanted to wear cargo pants and bathing suit tops. How she did in O, and on one two step. Oh, if you watch that video. We all wanted to dress like that. We all wanted to be Sierra. Every single last one of us, we wanted car we wanted cargo pants with a bathing suit top, a half jacket. That's what that was, that's what the style was. That's what we wanted. Sierra's that girl, and you got Missy, who's good. Um, you know, work with Sierra and Kim. Goats, all in the building, just everybody. Global Impact Award. Ah, Missy misdemeanor. Okay, so. Basically, it's the Global Impact Award. It, this is very powerful to me. Like I said, H to the is so, B to the is A. Not guilty. Y'all got to feel me. <laughs> I swear to God. I love my childhood, B. These kids will never understand, bro. These kids will never understand real music. These kids are growing up on these bops. We had classics, bro. We grew up on classics. Shit that this is why we grew up in this era where these legends still exist today. Like these legends, when we get like their age, their their music is still gonna be played. That age to the is when I come on, that's always gonna be, you know, like that record. Like who don't know? That's that was when Jay Z was in his prime. Um, he was a young man, and he came out like age to the is so. But yeah, Swiss Beats. Like I remember, he's a super producer. I remember Swiss Beats. You know, growing up, all the records he produced. Like what? Well, anywho, in other news, this is what Nicki Minaj is currently doing. Well, hold on. Okay, the Grammys are set to honor the 50th anniversary of hip-hop with an all-star performance. These are all the people that's going to be performing. They're honoring, basically, hip-hop. Glorilla is going to be performing, you know, to as a as a newbie. Right now, Nicki Minaj, right now what she's doing is, we do we have a problem? Nicki Minaj and Kenneth Petty sued for over 750000 for allegedly attacking a security guard. Apparently, being Nikki's husband is expensive and not in the way that you think. It actually, it's actually due to the large amount of pricey legal troubles she's taken on since bringing Mr. Minaj into her life. Last year, Nikki Minaj posed the question, do we have a problem? And the answer is yes, <laughs> especially with Kenneth Petty for a husband. There's consistently legal problems coming to her door. This time, the Minajes are being sued for $750,000 after Petty allegedly attacked a security guard. In January of 2022, he told you that the petties were being sued for assault. We told you that the petties were being sued for assault on a bodyguard named Thomas Weidenmuller for an incident that, that took place in Germany. Now, you going to overseas with that bullcrap. You going to Germany with your bullcrap. You took a rapist to Germany. 
He said he was said to be looking to sue the Chun-Li rapper for battery and infliction of emotional distress. And apparently they won't be making this one go away as Wyden Mueller is putting the price tag of 753,958.51 on his suit as he moves forward. According to the documents obtained by the folks at the blast, Wyden Mueller stated that he was working as head of security for Nikki's 2019 concert in Frankfurt, Germany. That was the show where a fan hopped up on stage, passing bodyguards, and Nikki didn't like that. The security guard claimed that after the show, Nikki, Kenneth, and a few people from her entourage confronted them. They recall that Nikki and her crew were irate during this confrontation and screamed at the female security guard that she was a fucking bitch. Nikki wasn't happy with the apologies and demanded another, but this time she pulled her phone out to, the, to record. She pushed the security guard to tell Menage's fans via the recording that she failed to do her job and put Menage in that. She pushed the security guard to tell Menage's fans. Hold on, what? Nikki wasn't happy with the apologies and, but de and demanded another. But this time she pulled her phone out to record. She pushed the security guard to tell Minaj fans via the recording that she failed to do her job. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 hold on. They, recall, they recall that Nikki and her crew were irate during this confrontation and screamed at the female security guard that she was a fucking bitch. Nikki wasn't happy with the apologies and demanded another. But this time she pulled her phone out to record. She pushed the security guard to tell Minaj's fans. What? Nikki wanted another apology. Apology. Okay. Okay. So this. Okay. Where I read during the confrontation and screamed at the female security guard that she was a fucking bitch. Nikki wasn't happy with the allegations and demanded another. But this time she pulled her phone out to record. She pushed the security guard to tell Minaj's fans via the recording that she failed to do her job and put Minaj in danger. Nikki then pulled her shoes off and threw them at the woman but missed. What? This was a female? Okay, it's Thomas Wadham Mueller. Okay. He was the head of the security. Okay, so he was the head of the security for the concert. The sh uh, fan hopped up, passing bodyguards, and Nikki didn't like that. The security guard claims that after the show, Nikki, Kenneth, and a few people from her entourage confronted them, basically the security guards, and Thomas was the head. They recalled that Nikki and her crew were irate during this confrontation and screamed at the female security guard that she was a fucking bitch. So this is the crew. Nikki wasn't happy with the apologies and demanded another. But this time she pulled her phone out to record. She pushed the security guard to tell Minaj's fans via the recording that she failed to do her job and put Minaj in danger. So she wanted another apology and wanted the security guard I get it now. Okay. Cause I was confused. Cause I'm like, who's the head? Okay. So Nikki wasn't happy with the apologies and demanded another, but this time Nikki pulled out her phone to record. She pushed the security guard, the female to tell Minaj's fans via the recording that she failed to do her job, but put Minaj in danger. So she was recording the security guard. She, they apologized. She wanted another, but, but pulled out her phone to record and she pushed the security guard to tell her fans via the recording that she failed to do her job and put Minaj in danger. So she wanted to humiliate this young lady. Nikki then pulled her shoes off and threw them at the woman, but missed. For Wyden Mueller, the assault took place when she was summoned backstage by Petty, who approached him with two other bodyguards. And he and Nikki proceeded to yell insults at him and accused him of being in some kind of entanglement with the female bodyguard. Oh my God. Without warning, Petty punched Wyden Mueller from the side and made contact with the right side of his face. Get the full... You mean to tell me, so you got a woman, uh, this is the head of security. You got a female security that Nikki's bullying. This is, who the fuck are you to sit up there and try to 
tell a female she apologized to you for the the, the, the discrepancy because he's the head so of course they got other security guards he's over this young lady you're not happy with the apology you demanded another but you pulled out your phone to record like a humiliation you pushed the girl to tell your fans via the recording what they put the recording on a big screen or something that she failed to do her job and put Minaj in danger. So you wanted to hear what I think I remember this. So what you recording for? So to tell Minaj's fans via the recording that she failed to do her job and put Minaj in danger. So you're humiliating her. You're basically being a fucking bully. You basically are putting a pressing record. You're pushing her to basically t tell via recording while you record her. I'm, 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 I'm blown. Cause I'm, I gotta look this up to see how it went. Cause what I'm, what I'm understanding is that she basically got the apology, but then she pulled out her phone to record and then pushed. And after recording, she pushed the lady to basically tell the fans via the recording that she failed to do her job and put a menage in danger. I believe something went on big screen. I, did she put this girl on big screen so that the, the people could see her? The female security guard apologizing and saying whatever via recording so that all the fans can hear? That's what I'm getting. And I need to look that up. Because I remember I saw something where there was something about Nikki performing and it was a problem and it was like a the fans. It was something going on. But then with, you know, Petty approaches Thomas with two other bodyguards and... Nikki proceeded to yell insults at him and accused him of being in some kind of entanglement with the bodyguard. Then without warning, Petty, he punched the man in his face. So this man likes violence. He's sick. What's the purpose of you punching Thomas in his face? You didn't even... With the, and then you're going to sucker punch him? You're going to just be in his face and he's having a conversation and you just are going to decide to be violent as a rapist and as a, a, a person that murdered but got manslaughter, you're going to basically be violent and show exactly the menace to society you are and why you shouldn't be free. You're an an that nigga's an animal. That, that, she married an animal. Like, you literally brought this animal to people's, in, in people's vicinity. You literally have an a, a, a employee and you let your husband assault him. And so why didn't he, why didn't he not go for M's? And then the female security guard, you threw a shoe at her. Why is she not suing her too? And then I'm confused. I'm like, what type of humiliation is this for you to sit up there and get an apology, but you record her and you want her to tell via the recording that you felt to, that she felt you want her to tell via the recording that she felt to do her job and put you in danger via the recording. What you put her on big screen so people can hear her say this. Is that what I'm interpreting? Interpretate what? What is interpreting? No, interpreting. I'm I'm baffled. That's why I'm I'm my mind is is that is that what I'm interpreting? That's the word. Am I understanding? Because I'm I'm baffled. I'm just trying to under. Like, did they really do that? You threw a shoe at a female security guard. You punched the he punched the head the head guard. You basically humiliate the girl. She the, uh, the first apology wasn't good enough. You record her to tell your fans via the recording. So I'm assuming you put this girl on blast on a screen or something. I don't know how the fuck she did that. I got to look that up. That's what basically is going on with Nicki Minaj. She got a lawsuit basically. And it was reported. Ken reported this January 2022 that basically they were sued or whatever um, for this assault. And, um, basically now they got the information on the case and he didn't make it go away. He's basically asking for $753,958 and 51 cents. Petty. <laughs> He's petty because he got an exact number. Just say 754,000, sir. He broke it down. So you mean he really did. He really is. He did. He being fair. Like he was like, I don't want no more, no less. This is what I feel I deserve. He deserves way more than that. He deserves at least an M. For, he, he's, Kenneth Petty's an animal. A complete animal. He's an animal. And he's the type of person that needs to be in jail forever. He, he's not supposed to be in society. This girl, is. she married an animal and she's an animal herself. And it's embarrassing. Well, everybody at Grammy Weekend having a ball. Everybody that she, you know, disrespected. And they're all having a great time, you know, enjoying each other's legendary company. 
you know, nominated winners. All the winners are in the same circle, but the loser is getting lawsuits. And she's basically dealing with legal fees from, you know, her husband's rape term, victim term survivor. She got a whole freaking um, lawsuit with a bodyguard now over here throwing shoes at people from Germany. And the case now, finally, they got the details of how much he won't now. And then you're not invited to the Grammys. And then all the legends are out, you know, and you supposed to be queen of what? And you weren't present. And they didn't, what well, you, the legend wasn't present, the queen of rap. Which, but I thought you were the queen of rap. Why weren't you, where were you with Hove? Why weren't you sitting next to Missy? Why, why weren't you sitting next to Kim? All the legends were in the building. I see I, everybody I grew up on, I saw. I didn't see you. Okay. Well, that's pretty much what is going on with her grammy weekend is here it's about to be um sunday soon and you know basically the animal that she's with got her another lawsuit <laughs> she's gonna be paying for it he's already basically you know he lost against the state of new york he pulled his whole lawsuit from the state of new york because they caught him lying um so he's definitely lost for the state of new york he's gonna stay on the sex offender list as he should um the situation with Jennifer Hub, that's still going on. We don't have any updates on that yet. But this is a new lawsuit for her. And um, that's what pretty much the queen of, you know, whatever she claimed to be is doing, you know. So is Nicki Minaj the queen of rap? No, she never was. She wasn't chosen. The queen, the queens are, there are multiple queens. Missy, Eve, Kim, Queen B. That's, you know, people know Queen she literally got that title from Biggie. Queen B, if you want to pinpoint somebody and say, oh, who's Queen B? Who's who? Okay, Kim, because she really made female rap very sexy. She opened up a new lane, right? Queen B, little Kim passed the torch to Cardi. He, she didn't pass the torch to you. You try to take Kim's position. Kim lasted. Legends and blueprints never die. The copy died. She's a copy. She's dying. She's dead. Kim is still in the building. She's still your own freaking boss. Wayne is in her face like, this is my idol from when I was growing up. You lost. The copy, it never goes on. The copy dies. The blueprint, the original always lasts. That's why Kim is in the building and you're basically at the courthouse. And Cardi's going to be presenting and you're basically going to be mediating. You know what I mean? They said jail slash hell. <laughs> Girl, Kim Bobby is messy. He said the location is jail slash hell. He damn sure enough, she got to deal with God for, you know, he got to, she and her husband got to deal with God for what they did to, um, the, harassing, um, Jennifer Huff definitely got to deal with God for that. And then also the jail is where he belongs with his animalistic ass. He's an animal. He, 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 he does not belong in society. He is not sane. He's somebody that is a menace to society and he does not deserve to be in society at all. He needs to be away, locked away in jail, and definitely is going to correspond with God when it's time to tell him, why did you touch that girl like that without her permission? You're going to have to pay for that on in this life and in the next. You're not even going to make it to the next life because you're going to be dead. Jehovah's not going to resurrect you. You're going you to stay dead. You're going to be destroyed. So basically, like, yeah, that's pretty much what the report is. The Grammy weekend is happening. Missy got the Global Impact Award. All the legends are in the building looking fresh to death in their best suits and ties and dresses. And Nicki Minaj is over here ca catching lawsuits left and right, getting quotes from the victims. And, you know, is, is mediating with another victim turned survivor. And it's just, you know, looking stupid out here in these streets. She went ahead and tried to sabotage Lotto in many ways, failed miserably. Lotto got nominations after she degraded her terribly, calling her all type of racist some slurs racist slurs lost with the sabotage with lotto lotto gets nominated for two grammys she gets zero embarrassingly glorilla currently is nominated cardi on top of everything the the l's that nikki took they got cardi presenting an award and i know it's for rap cardi's going to be passing the torch to another girl lotto or glorilla whichever one um cardi's presenting and that's basically a big slap in her face because it's like that's 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 what you were supposed to be doing and they got cardi doing it because cardi deserves it she's that girl that's how you know they really like she's done nikki like cardi took your spot like he she been had it but cardi got a grip cardi got a grip like she's not going nowhere and nikki cannot move cardi she's tried but cardi's they she's when you're chosen 
they can't move you. When you're not chosen, we can easily throw you away. We did. We threw her away. The Grammys threw her away. We didn't want you. We want Cardi. So we choose her and we keep picking Cardi. Everything you do, we keep picking Cardi. We keep, And that's why Cardi's still here. We love, we like Lotto. We keep picking Lotto. We want, we're rooting for her. That's why she's still here. We definitely rooting for Glorilla. We love her story. She came up. That's why she's still here. You can't bully the people. You cannot take away, you cannot bully people into, you out of their positions when they're chosen. You can, if you're chosen, you're chosen. There's nothing you can do about it. When God chooses you, when the people choose you, they're chosen. There's nothing you can do. They're not going anywhere. A lot of not going anywhere. Glorilla, Cardi, damn sure enough, not going anywhere. Cardi's, oh my God. Cardi's going to drop her second album this year. And Cardi's being very, very tight about her, her music. And I'm very proud of her for that because she said, you know what, if she do anything, the girls are going to steal. The girls are going to jack her shit. She's correct. Okay. The Barb's are so ready for Cardi's album. We're not even talking about Cardi's second album yet. We're just waiting for sis to release it. And it's like, when it come, it come. The Barb's are so thirsty because they're so scared of Cardi's greatness, how she's going to snatch Nikki's edges yet again and fuck her whole life up. How she did with Bodak Yellow and how she did with Invasion of Privacy. Like Cardi is going to lay and slay. Literally. And Nikki's supposed to be coming out with an album and ain't nobody finna buy it. But the Barb's. And Cardi's album is gonna come out and the whole world is gonna go mayhem. And I'm gonna be the first one. Well, I I, I don't think I'm gonna be the first because people gonna beat me to it probably. We're gonna be up at midnight waiting. I know I, I damn sure enough will be one of them on iTunes purchasing the album. We're just chilling like, okay, whenever it's just release it. But the Barb's are desperate. They're asking, when is she gonna release the album? Are you scared? You afraid? You know Cardi finna fuck shit up, huh? You just know. And so you want her to hurry up and do it, huh? You just can't wait. You know she finna fuck it up. They know that. But anywho, y'all, y'all tell me what y'all think about this hot ass mess and, and the beautiful positivity going on during Grammy weekend that Nicki Minaj is not invited to and is, you know, locked out of like the peasant she is. Everybody's in the kingdom in the palace and you are the civilian on the outskirts of the curb. The Grammys put you on the curb and they, all, all the people invited in, in the kingdom and the Grammys put you on the curb. That's embarrassing. And you said you're the queen of what? Or you are the queen of the peasants. You're queen of the beggars. Because the beggars be outside the palace. And the people come outside and give the beggars coins. You're the queen of the beggars because you beg for people to like you. You're begging for a title that we already gave to somebody else. Girl, bye.